After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutations, peace and blessings upon the best of creation, the jewel and crown of creation, the beloved of Allah Almighty, the coolness to our eyes, the purpose of our lives, the reviver of our hearts, the inspirer to our minds, the awakener of our souls, the most honored one, the most praised one, the most generous one, the most kind one. Undoubtedly, he is the most beautiful one. None other than Sayyiduna wa Nabiyuna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa barak wa sallam. Last Friday, I spoke on the life of and virtues of Sayyiduna Amirul Mu'mineen Uthman ibn Affan Dhunnurain radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. We know that his martyrdom took place on the 18th of Dhul Hijj. Before Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu an, who passed away at the age of 83 or 84 around this time, around this age, one of the greatest men to walk on this earth after the prophets of Allah Almighty is the Khalifa which preceded Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman which is Sayyidina Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Sayyidina Umar, the son of Al-Khattab, radiyallahu an, he was born 13 years after the year of the elephant. So Sayyidina Umar radiyallahu an was 13 years younger than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Uthman was six years. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq was two years. And Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib, radiallahu an, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an was around 30 years younger than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Around 30 years if I'm not mistaken, younger than Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, yes. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam announced their prophethood at the age of 40, Sayyiduna Ali was 10, 10 years old. Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an, they were around 27 years old. Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an was around 38 years old. And Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu an was around 34 years old. These were the ages of the four rightly guided caliphs, al Khulafa al Rashidun. Al Khulafa al Rashidun al Mahdiyun, the rightly guided Khulafa successors of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. These were the ages when Nabi alayhi salatu was salam announced their prophethood. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, it is said that he accepted Islam after the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam six years around six years and he accepted Islam in the month of Dhul Hijjah, this month and Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, at that time he was one of the ambassadors of the Quraysh 
He was one of the chiefs of the Quraysh. He was the 40th male to accept Islam. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an was the 40th male to accept Islam. His childhood and upbringing radiallahu ta'ala anhu was filled with education. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an could read and write Arabic. They were literate. They could read and write Arabic. And Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, about him, his description, it is said that Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu was tall, taller than the usual height of the people, such that when they would ride upon a horse, their heels would touch the ground. That's how tall they were. So Umar was very tall. And he, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, was of fair complexion with a touch of redness in his cheeks. He had no hair at the top of his scalp. So this part, he had no hair here. And Umar, radiallahu anhu. And he had a very thick beard all the way around and he had uh, it said that Sayyidina Umar radiallahu and had two black marks on his cheek due to his excessive crying at night he would cry a lot at night radiallahu an. and it's reported that Sayyidina Umar had big ears as well and Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, he was someone who was widely respected amongst the Quraysh. He was from amongst the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam who received the glad tidings of Jannah in this world. There's ten companions as I mentioned last week. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu was one of them. He radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated 539 ahadith, 539 narrations from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He was the father-in-law of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. For he married his daughter Sayyida Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala anha to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi alayhi salatu salam married Sayyidina Umar's daughter Hafsa radiallahu anha. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu an married their daughter Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The first to migrate to Medina Munawwara was Sayyidina Mus'ab bin Umar. Musa'ab ibn Umar radiallahu an was the first to migrate to the Hijra from the companions to Medina Munawwara. The second was Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu an. And after them, it was Sayyiduna Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. Sayyiduna Umar, when he accepted Islam, it's a very famous story. He was the 40th male to accept Islam. He, for six years, was hearing that there are pockets of people in the city of Mecca who are becoming Muslim. So, one day he had enough. Whoever he would see a slave that became a Muslim, he would beat them up. And one day he seen, he was seen marching through the streets, angry, towards finding the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And he was asking, where is he? Where is Muhammad? Where is he? And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, who at the time was propagating the deen to the companions in secret, 
Sina Umar radiyallahu an came across Sina Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas. Sina Sa'ad said to Umar, why are you so angry? What's wrong? What's the problem? He said, I'm looking for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want to kill him. He is spreading this religion against the teachings of our forefathers. Sina Sa'ad radiyallahu an, he said, before you try and you want to go and kill the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I don't know if you've heard, but your sister is Muslim. And your brother-in-law, your sister's husband is Muslim. He became enraged and angered by this more. He changed his direction and went straight to his sister's house. He started hitting the door. Open up, open up. At the time, there was a companion called Sayyidina Khubab. Sayyidina Khubab radiallahu an, who was teaching his sister Sayyidina Fatima and her husband Sayyidina Sa'id bin Zaid, who is also one of the ten Sahaba who were promised Jannah. They said to Khubab radiallahu an, hide. Sina Khubab hid behind the curtain. Sina Umar, the door was opened, he marched inside. Before asking any questions, he began to beat his sister and his brother-in-law up. Seeing this, he seen Khubab hiding, he took Khubab and started beating Khubab up radiallahu an. Eventually, he seen blood flowing from Sina Sa'id's face and he stopped. And he stopped, he realized what he was doing and he asked them, tell me what were you reading? They said, we were reading verses of the Quran that were revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, give me, I want to read them. He says, you can't have them. He said, why? He said, you must be pure before you can touch this. Go and wash yourself. Sina Umar washed himself and then he opened the Quran and he began reciting the verses from Surah Taha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam these verses. And when Allah jalla wa ala revealed these verses to Sina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Sina Umar began reading these verses. Taha ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'an li tashqa illa tazkiratan li man yakhsha tanzilan min man khalaq al-arda wa al-samawat al-ula ar-Rahman ala al-arsh istawa lahu ma fi al-samawat wa ma fi al-ard wa ma baynahuma wa ma tahta al-thara Allahu Akbar Taha these are those letters from the Qur'an that only Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam know the meaning of. Huruf muqatta'at. We have not sent the Qur'an upon you, O Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to cause you distress. The Qur'an wasn't revealed to distress you. Rather, it is sent as a reminder for those who fear Allah. When Sayyidina Umar read these verses, he said, I swear by Allah, it is as if God is talking to me. His heart melted and he said to his brother-in-law, take me to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I want to meet him. Before this, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, they was making dua. They were making a dua, oh Allah, guide to Islam, one of the two Umars. The Umar which you love the most, bring him to Islam. Who? Umar bin al-Khattab or Umar ibn Hisham? Umar bin Hisham is who? Abu Jahl. And Umar bin al-Khattab is Sayyidina Umar. So Nabi alayhi salatu would make this dua in front of the Sahaba, Oh Allah, guide 
one of the two Umars that you love the most, whichever one you love the most, bring him towards Islam. <coughs> and Allah Almighty loved Sina Umar bin al-Khattab. Allah Almighty guided Sina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu to whom? To the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They arrived in the house of Sidna Arqam bin Arqam. His house was known as Darul Arqam. And Nabi Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would teach the Sahaba in secret the Quran and Islam in Sidna Arqam's house. This is regarded as the first ever madrasa in Islam. Darul Arqam, Ibn Al Arqam, Radiallahu An. Sayyidina Arkham bin Arkham's house was the first madrasa where Rasulullah would teach Islam and the Quran to the companions in secret. Knocked on the door. Who is it? So Sa'id bin Zaid, who is with you? Umar bin al-Khattab. Open the door. Open the door. Who was standing there? Sayyidina Hamza. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's uncle. Sina Hamza, he was also highly respected. He had a huge reputation amongst the Quraysh. How did Sina Hamza become Muslim? He accepted Islam one week before Sina Umar. Sina Hamza was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's uncle. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam's father Sina Abdullah was stepbrothers with Sina Hamza. Sayyidina Hamza had a lot of love for Rasulullah sallallahu One day he was out, he was known for uh, hunting. Sayyidina Hamza was known for hunting. He was on a hunting expedition. He came back and he was told that your nephew has been beaten up. Sayyidina Hamza radiyallahu an became angered by this and went to the Kaaba. He did tawaf around the Kaaba and he said, where is Abu Jahl? He said, here. He said, how dare you do this to my nephew? He says, he's preaching against. He says, what would you do if I became a Muslim? <clears throat> Couldn't do nothing. He said, then I announce that I have accepted the religion of my nephew. Became Muslim. Went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Said, ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu annaka Muhammad Rasulullah. That you are the Rasulullah, that you are the Rasul of Allah. I accept this. One week later, end of this is the start of the week, end of the week, Sina Umar comes. Sina Hamza opens the door and says, What do you want, Umar? He said, I've come to accept Islam. He said, Is it Islam that you've come to accept? He said, Yes. He said, That's fine. If it's Islam that you've come for, then you are most welcome. But if it's anything else, then I will kill you with your sword. This is Sina Hamza saying to Sina Umar, these are heavyweights. These are two of the biggest names in the Meccan world at that time. In the world at that time, these two are feared, highly respected, highly reputable men from the Quraysh. And both of them in the same week have become Muslims. Sina Umar radiallahu an seen the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and they fell to their knees. They read the kalima, became Muslim, and Sina Umar said, Ya Rasulullah, I have this hatred in my heart for the people who have become Muslim. Because Sina Umar would beat them up. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam put their blessed hand on Sina Umar's heart. Put their hand on Sina Umar's heart and made dua. Oh Allah, guide Umar's heart. Take away the hatred of Islam from his heart and replace it with what? With the love of Islam. Allahu Akbar. Sina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, at that time, the hatred of Islam was taken out of the heart and the love of Islam was put in his heart. He said, I swear by Allah, when they lifted their hand from my heart, I just loved the Muslims and Islam. The Sahaba were inside the house, they heard, and they did takbir. They did takbir, 
that was echoing through the mountains of Mecca. They said, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu an said, the day Umar bin al-Khattab became Muslim, this was a victory for Islam. Allah strengthened and honored Islam with Umar Farooq radiallahu an. Sayyidina Umar said, what are you doing here? He said, I'm teaching. He said, today after today, you do not teach in secret. You do not pray in secret. We will march through the streets of Mecca. You pray your salah in the Kaaba, we will stand and defend you. Sayyidina Hamza is on one side. Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab is on the other side. All of a sudden, Allah has given strength and victory to the Muslims. That such a man of stature and caliber has accepted Islam. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, he accepted Islam and he was open about his Islam. He did not hide his Islam. When he radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, was going to migrate to Medina Munawwara. He was the third companion to migrate. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam gave him permission. All the Sahaba migrated in secret. They would go at night so that the Quraysh didn't know. Sayyidina Umar went to the Kaaba. He took off his bow and arrow, his sword. He threw it at the Quraysh and he said, I dare you to stop me from migrating. I challenge you, stop me from leaving Makkah to Medina. Nobody dared stand to Sin Umar radiallahu anhu. Sin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. What they said about Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu is as follows. Hadith is narrated in Bukhari and Muslim. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that I was sleeping one night. They had a dream. And in the dream, I was in Jannah. In paradise and there was a woman who was performing wudu in paradise on the side of one of the castles one of the palaces of paradise Nabi salatu salam asked her whose palace is this who owns this palace and she said I am making wudu at the palace of Umar bin al-Khattab this is a palace that Allah has given to Sayyidina Umar Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in another narration they mention that inside their dream Nabi alayhi salatu salam they seen that they were drinking milk they were drinking so much milk that it reached the blessed fingertips of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then Nabi alayhi salatu salam passed it on to Sayyidina Umar Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu began drinking from this Sina Umar then asked Nabi alayhi salatu salam, what is the interpretation of this dream? What does milk symbolize here? What does milk mean in this dream? What's the meaning of this dream? Nabi alayhi salatu salam said milk means knowledge. Milk means knowledge. And Nabi alayhi salatu salam said that this is knowledge that I am passing on to you Umar. Sina Umar radiallahu an was granted knowledge from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Sina Umar radiallahu an was told that there is a huge palace waiting for him in paradise. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh Umar, I swear by Allah that every devil on this earth turns away from you. And every angel lowers his head in honor of you. No, one, no devil wants to meet you. If the devil sees you, he takes a U-turn. Even the devil is scared of you. Nabi alayhi salatu salam said, لو كان بعد نبيا لكان عمر If there ever was to be a Nabi after me, that Nabi would have been Umar bin al-Khattab radiyallahu an. ولكن لا نبي بعدي There is no Nabi after me. صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said about Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, that he is the light of the people of Jannah. Every nation before Nabi alayhi salatu salam, all the umam, all the nations before the nation of Islam, the nation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
there would be an individual that angels would talk from. Muhaddas they are known as. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they said that in my ummah, that individual that angels talk through is Umar bin al-Khattab. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said specifically, on the day of Arafah, Allah Almighty forgives everyone. But they said specifically, Allah Almighty forgives Umar bin al-Khattab on that day. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever has angered Umar has angered me. Whoever loves Umar loves me. So Ali radiallahu an said, there are verses of the Quran that were revealed according to the opinion of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an. You know the verse of hijab, women wearing hijab? This was revealed when? When Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an was in a house and he seen the women uncovered, the heads uncovered. He said, oh Allah's messenger, why is there not a verse of the Quran revealed about hijab for the women? There and then Allah Almighty revealed a verse on hijab for the women. When it was revealed about Maqam Ibrahim, that we should read there, there and then Allah Almighty revealed the verses, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مقام إِبْرَاهِيمَ مصلى, That you should take the Maqam of Ibrahim as a place of worship. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the verses of alcohol, he was saying, why are these people drinking alcohol? Alcohol should be banned from Islam. There and then Allah Almighty revealed the verse, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who believe, hurmat alaykumul, Allah Almighty says in the Quran that uh, alcohol, innamal khamru wal maysiru wal ansabu wal adzramu ridsum min amal shaytan fajtanibuhu. That alcohol is haram, you should stay away. Why? Sayyidina Umar had to say it there and then Allah Almighty revealed. It's as if Allah was revealing on the opinions of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was very dear to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Very close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, he was martyred in the month of Hajj. He passed away, it is said, on the first of Muharram al-Haram. He was stabbed in the last days of the month of Hajj. And Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, he was martyred by a man called Abu Lu'lu al-Majusi. Abu Lu'lu al-Majusi was the man who came and he stabbed, stabbed Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Sayyidina Umar later died from those stab wounds and was martyred and returned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He passed away in the 24th year of Hijri. 24th year of Hijri. 14 years after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the great companion Sayyidina Suhaib al-Rumi radiallahu ta'ala anhu led the funeral of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an. And where is Sayyidina Umar buried? There are people who have extreme hatred for Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, but they have no option to accept that these two great companions, the two greatest men to walk on this earth, after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the uh, Anbiya al-Rusul, they are both buried next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina Munawwara. When you go to give salam to Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, straight after you give salam to Sayyidina Abu Bakr, and then you give salam to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. May Allah Almighty grant us the love for the companions, love of the shaykhain. Wa sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allah, 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 la ilaha illallah jud'a alayhi.